evening everyone i'm uh, yeah. uh, good evening everyone i'm uh, dr akshay e. jadav and uh, um, i'm uh, i'm a, a consultant pediatrician and uh, intensivist and emergency specialist from bellinus champion hospital bangalore karnataka and uh, today's topic is anasarka in children with uh, some scenarios in uh, which we encounter in the uh, pediatrics under in neonatal as well as pediatric care so going into the topic as such uh, we can roughly divide into uh, the what is anasarka based on what is edema and then anasarka then few mechanisms how it is done and then uh, the mechanisms also includes uh, how the presentation will be and then based on that then again cases so uh, uh, starting with uh, the basic uh, definition so just uh, to give uh, uh, some idea about like first before anasarka it is edema so an excess of fluid in the subcutaneous tissues which for uh, which forms or like which causes swelling of the tissues is known as edema. So it may first appear in the dependent regions of the body, like the feet in an ambulatory child or or the sacral region in a bedridden. So uh, specific definition for anasarca or massive generalized edema based on ICD-10 CM uh, 2022, that is code R60.1, a condition that is characterized by the presence of massive generalized edema is known as anasarca. And, uh, when we see uh, uh, like uh, the prime or the main headings under uh, the causes of edema, when we see in children, it can be divided into generalized and localized. Where generalized, we can have uh, the renal cause, then cardiac cause, then liver as the cause, hepatic cause, then uh, nutritional and uh, angioneurotic edema. And uh, for uh, uh, localized edema, there can be cellulitis, pyloresis, trauma, congenital as Milroy's edema. So if we see the causes of generalized edema under cardiac cause, then uh, uh, based on like how to elicit that. So one is like uh, coming to the history of cardiac condition, any particular age where it started, edema in the dependent areas, like the sacrum in infants because they are non-ambulatory and lower limbs in walking child because ambulatory. Then tachycardia, tachypnea, enlarged and tender liver. If we see the causes of generalized edema based on hepatic origin, so uh, the age, it can be any age. Then again, uh, edema, uh, usually here in hepatic, it starts in the abdomen, then progresses to other parts of the body. Then uh, it can be the presentation can be in the form of jaundice as well, then bleeding, the SSS, or dark urine and clay colored stools. That cause uh, of generalized edema when renal as the origin, we see that primarily they can be preschool and school children mainly. Edema starts in the peri or vital area, mainly in the morning, then becomes generalized. Ascites is common. Urinary symptoms are predominant, like the oligura or hematuria. Then uh, there may or may not be presence of hypertension. Uh, the differential diagnosis when there is hypertension can be minimal change in nephrotic syndrome from uh, nephritic nephrosis. Then um, coming to the other uh, lesser uh, common causes, that is nutritional as well as uh, angioneurotic. So nutritional age of weaning usually it starts, that is from six months to two years. Edema starts in the hands and feet, then progresses to the limbs, but usually not associated with ascites. Here, the constant feature, uh, this is a constant feature of quashiorker like um, uh, scenario and variable feature. Like here, the constant feature and the variable are of, uh, from a uh, point of view. And then constant features will be the presence of the edema itself and uh, 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 generalized malaise and uh, lethargy. And uh, you can see the protruding abdomen because of lower uh, proteins. And then uh, various features can be the presence of skin symptoms, uh, skin, skin signs, the pavement pattern and others. And uh, dietic history, uh, based on that, we can probably uh, elicit partly. Then uh, engineering edema can happen again at any age. Edema starts in the soft tissues. This lips, belly or male, genitalia, and the extremities. Uh, itching and skin manifestations are primary. History of drug in the last two to three weeks. Sometimes it can be in a uh, few hours as well. Maybe recurrent and uh, before. And then uh, the history or uh, uh, a detailed history or family history is necessary. So based on the distribution of the edema, um, like anasarca is gross generalized edema with profound subcutaneous tissue swelling. Localized edema does not reflect a sustained impairment in the ability to maintain normal sodium balance. Then special forms of fluid collections in different body cavities when this type of edema happens as generalized, that is hydrothorax in the pleural cavity, hydropericardium in the pericardial cavity, and ascites in the pericardial cavity. So two main mechanisms under this uh, anasarca or the uh, formation of edema and then progressing to anasarca are 
one is the mechanism of underfilling and second is the mechanism of overfilling mechanism of underfilling primarily it is reduced intravascular volume due to the retention of sodium and hence along with sodium water mechanism of overfilling is sodium and water retention which is again secondary to the expanded plasma and intracellular tissue fluid volume which is all, uh, also accompanied by lack of natriuresis so sodium does not get excreted so uh, how uh, underfilling mechanism is so basically it is initiated with increased glomerular permeability uh, to albumin and hence albumin goes into the urine and albuminuria and then that causes hypoalbuminemia decreased plasma oncotic pressure then the movement of water from the intravascular space to the interstitium the contracted intravascular volume then increases the renin angiotensin uh, aldosterone activity increases the sympathetic nervous system activity and hence antidiuretic release now these factors will cause water and sodium retention and further decrease in plasma oncotic pressure sets up a vicious cycle similarly when uh, what happens in overfilling uh, resulting from expanded extracellular volume that results from primary renal sodium uh, retention possibly secondary to the renal damage and then in overfilling edema the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and the sympathetic nervous system and adh secretions are overall depressed so um, and here i mean what is sns and ras that is i mean blood blood pressure and blood volume are closely related by the uh, interrelated actions of the sympathetic nervous system and the ras that is renin angiotensin aldosterone system and there is a reflex vasoconstriction which is caused by parallel sympathetic nervous system and uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system which is uh, activation which is modulated by two interactive uh, that is negative feedback mechanisms called bare reflex if uh, you, have, you have to recapitulate what is sns and rn rws going to the overflow and underflow in simplistic terms reduced sodium excretion and hence increased transcapillary hydraulic pressure this causes two things one is expansion of the extracellular and intravascular volumes then uh, there is increased natriuretic peptides increased capillary permeability hence again expansion of extracellular and intravascular volumes and uh, underfilling hypothesis wherein reduced uh, end artery blood uh, volume and hence renal uh, perfusion also reduces this reduces the sodium excretion reduced natriuresis and then expansion of the extracellular and intravascular volumes and decrease oncotic pressure decrease oncotic pressure again causes expansion of extracellular and intravascular volumes and hence this forms a vicious cycle similarly explained in a diagram diagrammatic form the underfilling and uh, this one in a little detailed form that is uh, uh, which 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 this particularly gives us the edema forming stage and equilibrium stage so uh, a kidney disease which leads to proteinuria albuminuria so reduced serum albumin reduced uh, oncotic pressure so shifting of intravascular to interstitial volume then that causes two things one is increased interstitial volume and hence the edema that is the edema forming stage and uh, decreased shift intravascular when shift happens from intravascular to interstitial volume then decreased plasma volume and blood volume also so it hence reduces low the blood pressure as well orthostatic hypertension uh, and shifts. and and then um, the other mechanisms that is bare reflex me mechani mechanism that is uh, arginine vasopressin that is avp increases increase renin increase aldosterone and reduced atrial natriuretic peptides and increase norepinephrine this causes reduced glomerular filtration rate increased uh, uh, increase in the fractional filtration as well and uh, increased proximal and distal tubular sodium reabsorption and uh, hence increased water reabsorption as well as along with sodium reabsorption and hy uh, hyponatremia later on in shifts then uh, restoration of the blood and plasma volume if happens along the line increased extracellular volume then normal blood pressure then uh equalizes the uh, angiotensin uh, vasopressin uh, uh, and e equalizes even the renin aldosterone nor and uh, adrenaline norepinephrine levels so that comes the equilibrium stage so basically uh, this is how it happens in nephrotic syndrome similarly the overfilling th theory of uh, sodium retention again in nephrotic syndrome uh, if you see Uh, the kidney disease proteinuria reduced serum albumin reduced oncotic pressure shift intravascular to interstitial but kidney disease also reduces glomerular filtration rate and renal blood flow and uh, is uh, it may or may not be reduced then uh, reduce reduction of fractional filtration happens and then uh, primary sodium retention also happens so when primary sodium retention happens that causes increased plasma volume and blood volume and uh, that 
can lead to inter increased interstitial volume plus edema, or, and also it can lead to reduced angiotensin uh, vasopressin and reduced renin, reduced aldosterone that is suppressed uh, RAS system, and uh, reduced norepinephrine, increased atrial natriuretic peptide. And then uh, this again in turn causes increased sodium excretion, natriuresis. Then uh, that again causes then restoration of blood and plasma volume, increased extracellular volume, normal, normalizing the blood pressure when it reaches the equilibrium stage. Then uh, all the levels of uh, uh, these hormones become equal, uh, equilibrium. When we see uh, what is the overfill and underfill uh, edema in nephrotic syndrome, uh, slight differences. So uh, the study suggests that the pathogens of edema in individual patients may occur with via widely variable mechanism, that is intravascular volume underfilling versus overfilling. Managing edema should therefore be directed to the underlying pathophysiology rather than seeing the uh, going by the set protocol. So uh, when we see the factors, that is glomerular filter stage is less than 50% of the normal, it is probably the overfilling is uh, overtaking rather than the underfill. And uh, if the glomerular filtration rate is more than 70% of the normal, then it is underfill hypothesis, which is overtaking. If serum albumin is more than two, then it is overfill. If less than two, it is underfill. Minimal change histologically, if we all, uh, already have the reports, then it is probably underfill hypothesis, which is predominating. If there is hypertension, it is overfill hypothesis. Postural hypertension, underfill hypothesis. So if we see um, uh, generalized edema, in general, if we see, uh, when we divide, when we say it like cardiac, then hepatic, renal, uh, then uh, we say it uh, due to endocrine disorders, then there can be protein, potassium, and other micronutrient deficiencies, or it can be drug-induced or allergic edema. So this uh, picture shows like what can be the different causes and how they can present. Like generalized edema can be because of, uh, can be presentation as dyspnea, cyanosis, arrhythmia. There can be an underlying CHT history hypertension, generalized atherosclerosis, enlarged cardiac uh, features of constrictive pericarditis, and uh, eventually it can present as some form of heart failure. And um, the, uh, that is underfill hypothesis. And uh, coming to the hepatic uh, causes, that is, or the signs, how they present, ascites, capitmedicine, esophageal rectal viruses, uh, there can be loss of baby care in the adolescence and uh, young adults, then hypergammaglobulinia, then features of parenchymal liver disease, edema due to liver disease. Then uh, there can be protein urea, microscopic hematuria, urinary cas, uh, resulting in uh, renal form, that is then hypoalbuminemia, lipiduria, hypertension, reduced uh, EGFR, and then oligoanuria. So this edema related to the proliferative and non-proliferative glomerulonephritis, or CKD, that is chronic kidney disease, or end-stage renal disease. Then uh, features of either uh, hypercortisolemia, hypothyroidism, hypercortisolemia, or hypothyroidism, or even thyrotoxicosis, both or premenstrual edema, edema due to endocrine disorders. Then uh, chronic malnutrition with inadequate caloric intake or, qual or qualitative dietary deficiencies, then chronic alcohol abuse, hypoproteinemia. These can also result in protein, potassium, uh, multiple various uh, micronutrient deficiencies, like even vitamin B1 or iron deficiency. Then uh, edema caused by drugs or uh, certain foods that is drug induced or allergic. Most commonly, it can be uh, calcium channel blockers, prednisolone, ibu ibuprofen, etc. Because more commonly we use ibuprofen, so we must be aware that ibuprofen and prednisolone can also cause edema and generalized edema. And uh, that can uh, uh, turn into a, a bad phase that is angineuritic edema like situation. So, uh, proliferative glomerulonephritis can have many other non renal manifestations, may not have edema totally, also. One important point here when we say edema related to proliferative and non-proliferative glomerular nephritis. And uh, so when we primarily divide into cardiac, hepatic, and renal, uh, so if we see uh, slight details about cardiac, so when we see like how they present heart failure, congenital heart defects are the most common, then in that, which are the ones, and uh, they are more common, of course, in infants and children, because that is where uh, the compromise starts. Then cyanotic lesions with CHF, mostly they can be hypoplastic heart syndromes, PGA, transposition of great vessels, TGB, and then tr uh, truncus arteriosus. Then uh, VST and PDA are more common causes of CHF as well. Cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy uh, is characterized by massive cardiomegaly and ventricular dilatation. The cause is usually unknown, so we call it as an uh, idiopathic cause. Other causes for uh, dilated can also be genetic, 
neuromuscular that is X linked genetic or neuro neuromuscular disease like Frederick Ataxia, uh, DMD or Duchenne's muscular, Kawasaki's autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis, that is SLE, then uh, hyperthyroidism and metabolic mitochondrial primarily from maternal origin, and then nutritional disease like beriberi deficiency of selenium, taurine, and carnitine. Other causes include disorders of coronary arteries like anomalous origin of left coronary, cardiotoxic drugs like doxorubicin, chronic hepatic abuse, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy really leading to edema, uh, maybe secondary to obstructive congenital heart disease, glycogen storage disease, or idiopathic hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Uh, restrictive cardiomyopathies result in poor ventricular compliance and inadequate ventricular filling. Causes include Hurler syndrome, Loeffler's, hyperesthenic syndromes. Viral myocarditis is most commonly caused by adenovirus in Coxsackie uh, B. It uh, often results in acute or chronic heart failure. Other infectious causes include diphtheria, systemic bacterial infections like sepsis and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Parasites and fungal infections are also but involved, but very rarely. Liver failure may be a complication of known liver disease or maybe a presenting feature. So features include progressive jaundice, fetal hepaticus, fe fever, anorexia, vomiting, and abdominal pain. There may be a rapid decrease in liver size without clinical improvement, hemorrhagic diathesis, presentation, and ascites. Uh, if infants then may present with irritability, lethargy, poor feeding, and sleep disturbances, mental status changes are also noticed with progression of symptoms. Older children may demonstrate asterixis. Hepatic anemia, viral hepatitis is again a common cause of liver failure. It is more likely in children with a combined infection with hepatitis B and D. Other viruses that may result in liver failure, EBV, HSV, adeno, entero, parvovirus B19, and VZ, that is chickenpox virus or varicella zoster. Hepatic anemia due to then uh, hepatotoxins, that is even uh, most common cause of liver failure, acute liver failure in less than one year in Western uh, Western world where documentation is appropriate has been known to be due to uh, un unintended overdose of paracetamol or acetaminophen, which is more common. And then uh, carbon tetrachloride, amino, uh, aminitophaloid, mushrooms are other causes. Idiosyncratic damage may occur with halothane, phenytoin, carbamazepine, uh, or sodium valproate. So uh, when we see the um, when, when we see the generalized approach to NSRK, so the history based on such uh, important signs can be appropriately uh, known based on uh, the stepwise manner that is the history and physical examination uh, with limiting the DDs to specific organ systems. So signs and, uh, and uh, symptoms which are specific to heart disease or liver disease or renal disease uh, is utmost important. History of burns and presence of severe or extensive burns also reveals an important etiology for patients with no clinically obvious etiology work workup must be done uh, because we have to exclude cardiac and renal. So recent illness, a recent streptococcal infection can be there, might be a suggestion of an acute post-infectious glomerulonephritis. The systemic symptoms like arthritis, rash, dyspnea, fever, exercise intolerance, diarrhea will help. Then uh, quantifying uh, urine output and qualify urine consistency and color. So oliguria can be a sign of hypovolemia or renal insufficiency, frothy urine, such as proteinuria. Then uh, hematuria raises the concern for acute glomerulonephritis. So when we see the uh, history quantify the weight gain, this is sometimes qualified by parents uh, using rapid changes in clothing rather than quantified by changes in the body mass. So family history of nephropathy, hereditary angioedema, important. Then physical uh, examination in the form of the child's growth parameters should be evaluated because growth failure occurs with CRF or CKD. And uh, vital signs may indicate a diagnosis with heart failure. There is tachycardia and tachypnea. Hypertension may indicate renal failure or glomerulonephritis as well. So when we see the approach, so these are the basic approaches that is based on signs and symptoms. We can go for these tests and then these can be the differential diagnosis. So first line is about the signs and symptoms. Second line is about that uh, commonly used test, tests which we do. Third line shows the differential diagnosis. So when we see um, for the uh, generalized edema and uh, uh, localized edema. So generalized edema, again, if you see like uh, if it's, there is a direct history of severe burns or sepsis, then burns or sepsis is the DD. If there is diarrhea, then uh, most commonly uh, the um, the set of uh, first line of investigations, what we may uh, ask, and the second line can be CBC, albumin, total protein, electrolytes. The second line can be stool for alpha-1 antitrypsin or celiac panel. The DDs here can be protein-losing enteropathy, food protein-induced enteropathy, post-infectious, uh, or eosinophilic gastroenteritis. Coming uh, to the signs and symptoms of uh, if uh, 
if there are signs and symptoms of severe malnutrition uh, based on kosher curve, like typical signs or variable signs. Uh, then we can go ahead with CBC, serum, albumin, electrolytes, magnesium, zinc, where we have the 10 steps for managing the uh, uh, children with um, uh, protein energy malnutrition or PM uh, severe cases. So then it can be cash, uh, the kosher curve or protein calorie malnutrition. Signs and symptoms of liver failure, if they are there along with a generalized edema, then we have to see uh, the test that is liver function test, albumin, prothrombin time, uh, uh, PTT, glucose, electrolytes, then serum ammonia, hepatitis serology, HIV. Here, the DDs can be liver failure, infectious, uh, that is viral hepatitis or HIV, hepatotoxic drugs and chemicals, especially paracetamol or acetaminophen, and then metabolic diseases, various metabolic manuals, and ischemia or shock or due to congestive heart failure. If there are signs and symptoms of renal disease, uh, like hematuria, hypertension primarily, then uh, we can go ahead with uh, uric acid, electrolytes, blood urea, nitrogen, uh, creatinine, albumin, cholesterol, as well as other tests. Then abnormal, if there is abnormal uh, urine uh, examination and then BUN and uh, urine albumin, BUN and creatinine abnormal, then nephri nephrotic syndrome, tubular interstitial disease, glomerulonephritis and renal failure are possibilities. So um, here, one thing, uh, I mean, uh, it's already, uh, yeah, one, I mean, another set of this one is related to cardiac, that is signs and symptoms of card, uh, like CHF, like tachypnea, tachycardia, or gallop rhythm with hepatomegaly, if they are there. Then uh, we can go ahead with tests, which are first line, that is primarily CBC urine analysis, albumin, total protein, BU and creatinine electrolytes. If it happens to be anemia plus or minus thrombocytopenia, if yes, then uh, the, uh, the possibility for such generalized edema can be severe anemia, or it can be Casablanca merit syndrome. If uh, anemia and thrombocytopenia are not seen, then evidence of intrinsic cardiac defect are seen, then uh, based on echocardiogram, uh, chest X-ray and EKG, yes. Then congenital heart disease, cardiomyopathy, myocarditis, arrhythmia, coronary artery lesions, Kawasaki disease with coronary dilatations and other lesions, then RHT, rheumatic heart, uh, heart disease, rheumatic heart disease, and then uh, hypertension, coronal pulmonary cystic fibrosis. If not seen, uh, the cardiac uh, manifestations are not seen, then imaging we may have to do for it, uh, AV malformation and then uh, arteriovenous malformations can sometimes also present like that. And then signs and symptoms of uh, endocrine disorder like thyroid disease, then uh, free T4, TSH, if they are normal, then again go ahead with the, uh, the basic tests which we do for cardiac evaluation. And if they are abnormal, then hypothyroidism or uh, with uh, the, uh, the young adults who have mixed edema like presentation, then severe thyrotoxicosis can also be the cause. Localized edema, not pa part of this, uh, uh, this one, but uh, still it's interesting to remember. Uh, localized edema, if uh, again, congenital, no, yes. Yes, then it can be Turner syndrome, Milroy's disease, lymphatic anomaly, primary lymphedema. If not, not congenital, then whether there is fever or no fever. Yes, then it can be abscess, cellulitis, urticaria, no fever, whether it is recurrent, severe, uh, and uh, family history. If uh, all of these are yes, then possibility of angioedema with again family uh, family uh, tree or the uh, family history to be taken uh, in depth and also to be tested. If these symptoms that is recurrence, severity and family history is not there, they, if there is a possibility of environmental exposure, yes, then it can be sunburn, frostbite, insect bite, filariasis or plant induced dermatitis. And uh, if environmental exposure is not there, then whether you have to see whether there is a trauma, if yes, then secondary lymphedema or hydrogenic surgery or radiation uh, post of uh, these two. And uh, no trauma, then thrombophlebitis or sickle cell anemia, vaso-occlusive crisis can happen, then lymphoma. So basic pearls and pitfalls here, generalized edema, particularly in the face without other systemic symptoms is suggestive of idiopathic nephrotic syndrome of childhood. If a child has anasarca of unknown origin and urine analysis is negative for protein, the next level, what we do is like send serum tests that is including albumin and then consider causes such as liver failure, protein losing enteropathy, malnutrition and cardiopulmonary disease. Uh, a premature infant is always at a high risk of developing generalized edema, including facial edema because of low glomerular uh, filtration rate and an inability to handle water and solute loads. It's an important point which uh, we have to remember because we uh, routinely handle premature infants. Then uh, angioedema or angioneuritic edema 
is again uh, it's the severe form of articular it is similar to articular except that it affects the deepest deeper layers that is including subcutaneous and mucous tissues so it has intense pruritus uh, the redness then dif uh, differentiate uh, clearly from the generalized edema caused for example by hypoproteinemia children with episodic who are getting repeatedly uh, uh, the episodic uh, hereditary angioedema are at risk of potentially fatal laryngeal swelling. Uh, hence, it is essential that all the family members, including um, younger siblings, infants, are to be investigated. So uh, here, um, lymphedema, non-pitting edema of the face, uh, it is, non is either congenital, that is Milroy's disease, Turner syndrome in girls, uh, Noonan's in boys and girls, or acquired following removal of lymph nodes for biopsy, radiation therapy, or cancer. Rarely it is called by phalaris infection. Then uh, the most common, uh, this one, uh, the uh, we have seen here uh, the generalized approach to NSRCA. So when we see the most common uh, cause here, the most common cause happens to be nephrotic syndrome. So when we see the nephrotic syndrome, it is, or nephrosis, is defined by the presence of nephrotic range, proteinuria, hyperlipidemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. So uh, what is nephrotic range uh, proteinuria? Uh, in children, it is defined as protein excretion of more than 40 milligram per meter square per hour, or a first morning urine protein to creatinine ratio of two to three milligram per uh, milligram of creatinine or greater. In adults, it is characterized by protein excretion of more than or equal to 3.5 grams per day. So uh, if we see <clears throat> uh, a, a case of um, such a generalized edema, um, and how he may present. So uh, um, a male child of four year old with uh, uh, being a fourth offspring of the family or for moderate social status uh, has periorbital puffiness and then body swellings in the last two weeks. So presentation, con uh, the condition started by gradual onset progressive course of uh, periorbital puffiness, especially in, in the morning hours. Then followed by generalized edema and abdominal swellings associated with oliguria and uh, sometimes hematuria. So here again, we have to use the basic protocol. We have to rule out other causes of generalized edema as symptoms of congenital, uh, congestive heart symptoms like tachypnea, tachycardia, dyspepsia, or abdominal pain are there or no. Hepatic causes, jaundice, dark urine, bleeding manifestations or bleeding diseases. Then uh, nutritional history by age of onset, dietic history, see a site of edema and features of Now uh, the common features and the variable ones. Then angioneuritic edema is drugs, uh, which we discussed as uh, 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 calcium channel blockers, prednisolone, and even ibuprofen like, then itching areas of edema, past history, past history of any previous hospitalization and medication with similar uh, symptoms, then uh, systemic illness that uh, can cause nephrotic, like having SLE, early onset diabetes, or uh, even Hanox clonulin purpura, then malignancies as lymphoma or leukemia, then uh, having infections as post streptococcal glomerular nephritis. Hepatitis B, C, HIV, syphilis, malaria, bilirubiciasis. Then exposure to drugs like uh, 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 NSAIDs, including uh, uh, ibuprofen, then uh, ketorolac, then interferon, uh, D, penicillamine, uh, phenytoin. Then toxins such as lithium or even gold. Exposure to bee sting. Then whether developmental history based on whether development has been ongoing properly or it has been uh, a chronic issue then vaccination history, then generalized examinations, uh, generalized operation, uh, appearance in that the conscious level is uh, usually normal, but it can be disturbed secondary to CNS infection due to weak immunity. Then uh, build can be overall uh, overbuilt due to edema. That is even weight can be more than what their average weight was. And hence a daily weight gain or a daily weight checking is important. Abnormal, that is facial expression, periorbital puffiness and facial edema during nephrotic state, then crushing white face, on prolonged steroid therapy with the uh, neck uh, um, uh, swelling uh, clearly seen in the neck region also. Then uh, abnormal uh, orthopnic position in uh, tense ascites. Then uh, pallor, which is secondary to edema as well. Then uh, uh, the temperature, whether there is fever, BP, high, blood pressure, high nephritic nephrosis, then respiratory rate, secondary to infection or edema. Then other measurements include the weight for follow-up, then length the, or height, uh, the effect of prolonged steroid. Then uh, from head to toe examination for the presence of generalized edema in the periorbital region and face, lower limbs for bilateral pitting edema. The edema is ascending till uh, it reaches the genitalia and abdominal wall. Abdominal swelling with ascites. 
then uh, uh, other uh, we have to exclude the manifestation of other generalized causes that is cardiac hepatic nutritional and neurotic we have to exclude the manifestations of complications of nephrotic as infection thrombosis and complications of drugs mainly steroids and cytotoxic drugs so this was how we would uh, go for an approach when we are fairly sure that it can be nephrotic but how the case uh, uh, can be discussed in that way so if we see the edema how it is seen edema uh, uh, what we do is like um, i mean which are the basic steps to do uh, to check for the pitting type of edema is we have to press on the uh, edematous body part against a bo bony prominence like example is a tbl shade or malleoli so next question is how long 20 to 30 seconds then uh, uh, how to grade the severity of pitting edema one is measuring the depth of the pit that is depression in terms of millimeter plus how much time it is taking to come back that is rebound time so uh, based on that grade one uh, plus one, plus two, plus three, and plus four. Plus one is depression of two millimeters plus rebounding immediately. Depression of three to four millimeters plus rebounding in less than 15 seconds. Depression of five to six millimeters plus rebounding in less than 60 seconds. Uh, depression of eight millimeters plus rebounding in two to three minutes. So what we discuss again, causes of pitting edema as CCF, hepatic, nephrotic, malnutrition, hypoproteinemia. These were some of the references I have used. Uh, just to recapitulate or like have uh, some um, um, interesting questions as such. These are some of the MCQs. Uh, the following, um, you can see like the following are more suggestive of underfilling than overfilling in nephrotic syndrome, except so serum albumin concentration below two grams. Yes, it is more suggestive of underfilling. Minimal change histology, it can be. Postural hypertension, yes, but hypertension, it cannot, it need not be. Then, um, because uh, underfilling essentially means that the whole pressure has is lower because the overall quantity of fluid which is going to the uh, renal system is less. The following should be considered in management of severe anasarca and mild pulmonary edema in a hypertensive nephrotic child with serum albumin concentration, uh, 2.7 gram per deciliter and other findings consistent with the overfill hypothesis, except so, which can be used for severe anasarca with mild pulmonary edema? Loop diuretics, yes. Addition of ethyzide or metazolone to enhance diuresis. Yes, fluid restriction, of course, that will be the first step. Then whether we'll give 25% albumin every day? No, we cannot give. We have to give it on uh, in uh, on the first day after careful, carefully uh, managing or like appropriately checking the other vitals and also the need based on uh, uh, serial uh, values of uh, LFTs. The following are commonly known secondary complications of active nephrotic syndrome, except whether subclinical hypothyroidism can be there. Yes. Then whether thromboembolism can occur. Yes, because hyperlipidemia uh, and uh, 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 that also can uh, help. Uh, I mean, um, cause that basically a teenage girl with membranes. So and the uh, hypogamma globulin, yes, because even gamma globulins and um, uh, all the Ig, IgGs and IgAs and others are all gone in the urine as well. So definitely hypogamma is a part. Whether hepatitis as an active nephrotic syndrome, less likely. A teenage girl with membranous nephropathy presence with left-sided flank pain and gross hematuria and thrombocytopenia. The most likely etiology related to her nephrotic syndrome can be whether it can be um, a stone, unlikely because gross hematuria won't happen. It is uh, microscopic hematuria. And uh, thrombocytopenia is nothing to do with lurolithiasis. Urinary tract infection, again, gross hematuria and uh, thrombocytopenia need not be there except the left flank pain. Then, uh, Wilms tumor, it can have left flank pain. It can have sometimes gross hematuria, but uh, not uh, with thrombocytopenia. And thrombocytopenia and gross hematuria may need not be there. So left renal vein thrombosis, yes, it can cause gross hematuria and thrombocytopenia at the same time. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Uh, any questions or any? Thank you, Dr. Akshay. It was... Uh... Incredible presentation. I think very simply uh, with very simplified way of presenting how I